Welcome folks, this is Acid Roots. I'm going to review for you guys the Alice in Chains MTV Unplugged album, Unplugged. And uh, basically, this was kind of a particular project just because it marked like almost like the beginning of the end for the group Alice in Chains for a good while. The vocalist Lane Staley was in poor health due to drug addiction and they were unable to tour for their third studio album, the self-titled Alice in Chains, just because of the problems that Lane was having at the time. So they had not toured since a little bit after the Dirt album, and then subsequently they just had not done any concerts. So obviously MTV secured them, secured the bag and got them, to do an unplugged project which is basically just acoustic songs and occasionally like some new stuff some reinventions and that sort of stuff that allows you to kind of see them from a different angle now this was not terribly new to Alice in Chains just because they had done at least two acoustic EPs with Sap and then Jar of Flies but I definitely wanted to check this out just because I thoroughly enjoyed the Nirvana unplugged album and they did some new stuff and some different angles with what they did. So I figured like a dark band like Alice in Chains would definitely have some tricks up their sleeve. And this is an excessively good project. I mean, that's definitely something to say here as it is. They kind of go through the list of all their hits. Not every single one is on here. It's kept relatively compact. But, you know, there's no songs from Facelift. Uh, there's a couple songs from like Dirt that aren't on here, like Them Bones, and I think there might have been one other one. Uh, Grind is not here from Alice in Chains, that album. So they're, they're kind of selective. They chose like a different angle to kind of lighten the mood almost. But then I there were some songs like I would have loved to have heard Them Bones just to see like the angle that that would have come from because the heaviest songs don't really get the acoustic treatment and those are the ones that needed it like i'm so spoiled off of godsmack's ep the other side because they chose some heavy songs and then reworked those and it was just brilliant but acoustic uh, i mean alice in chains can do acoustic songs and they proved that and the reinventions that they do do are excessively good. But I was very surprised about this project that the, the songs that they chose to promote in terms of like the new and fresh stuff lacked bite. And that's kind of the thing. The single was over now, but I probably would have chose Sludge Factory as a single because to me that was the better song. It just had more enveloping type things. Um They kind of choose to go with more of like a Jar of Flies type feel. Like I feel like Over Now is very similar to No Excuses. So they, they were not trying to go in the direction of dirt. And that's kind of the problem because I felt like maybe it was just because of how dark that project was. But it definitely would have benefited to hear that more. But the worst song, one of the worst songs I felt like on this project was The Killer Is Me. I mean it, I felt like it had a good approach. Could have been a rather good song but the chords on the song were just awful. I mean, it was not melodic and it kind of messed with it. I mean, you hear some of these other songs from the acoustic angle. I felt like the instrumentation of the record was not melodic whatsoever. And it kind of chopped into the singing, which kind of made it, it just felt like there was too much going on and it wasn't really synchronized and did not really have like an appropriate feel. And considering that that's the only new song they did, Basically, Alice in Chains 1996 was something that almost felt rushed, and it kind of seemed as if they were trying to get themselves back together, and that was the concentration more so than saying, okay, we just dropped an album six months ago, but, you know, it just felt like very, the rhythm was just not there this time for that song. So obviously, I mean, sometimes when Unplugged works, I mean, it definitely allows for bands to kind of bolster their career and groups to bolster their career a little bit more because it provides some new angles and just plain fresh newness that you wouldn't hear otherwise but it didn't quite do that and with nirvana it was different just because uh you know kurt cobain before he died was not actually addicted he, he may have been on drugs but he wasn't morbidly addicted to them like lane staley was so it felt like lane was just i mean and really you have to talk about how 
uh, perfected almost Lane Staley was on this project just because, you know, despite him, you know, having the problems he went through and being a real elusive and kind of almost static character throughout some of this, I mean, he really shined in a lot of this, the way that this worked is proving that he had a personality that truly shone through. And the rest of the band kept up. I mean, they were synchronized, minus the new song. And the effectiveness of the band, I mean, it makes sense that they could do a Greatest Hits album and do a three-hour show, entirely acoustic when that's not their main shtick. And that just kind of happened to be the main thing. I was just surprised, you know, just out of nowhere on, on a whim like that, that they could not deliver an excellent song but other than that I mean everything else is pretty much top-notch so that's like the thing for me to talk about over now I mean that was essentially just like no excuses just a more almost seemingly radio friendly angle from that it was basically similar to that almost the whole way through and so it's, it's seven minutes though so that's why you'd almost prefer no excuses but yeah the two songs for promotion just uh I don't know, I would have chose Sludge Factory and probably Wood, something like that, just one of those, but they didn't. So, uh, I'm going to give this album a 9 out of 10, just because there were only four songs I did not enjoy, and I'll go ahead and list those for you. So, Nutshell, Down in a Hole, Frogs, and The Killer Is Me are the only songs I did not enjoy out of the 13 that were on there. That's obviously, I would have given this record a 10 had The Killer Is Me been something that I could enjoy. I mean, it may distantly grow on me. I mean, if I ever wind up saying that I do like The Killer Is Me from this album, you can basically up this score to a 10. But as of right now, I'm not enjoying it. And it's, it's like I said, it was disappointing just because I thought, you know, out of nowhere having like this new song and seeing them acoustic like they were on their EPs that like they should have knocked this out of the ballpark, but it was not synchronized. So that's the only thing stopping this from getting a 10. And uh, the social score basically gets like a seven just because there are so many good songs, Thousand Chains. I mean, obviously they have the, the catalog to be able to prove it, but the, the newness and the stuff that they choose to promote was not the, the ones I would have went with. And it's not like I'm being opinionated. It's just the fact that they had better songs. There are songs that are left off this album that could have been on there. Um, this, the choices of what they choose, chose to promote was kind of disappointing. But other than that, I mean, it's not like the album's bad. It's just that in terms of promotion, it, it isn't that hot. It's kind of half-baked. So, yeah, I mean, Facelift was ent entirely ignored. They could have put Sea of Sorrow. That would have been a good one. You know, just a bunch. We Die Young and uh, even Bleed the Freak. I would have loved to have seen that one on here. That would have been so brilliant. But, um... So, yeah, I mean, virtually, this is an excessively good project, but just the promotion is not, so...